My biggest concern about living in Watertown, I love Watertown, but there's no transportation. So I've been looking for a job for over a year, but because I can't get to these places, it's hard for me to get a job. And, you know, Milwaukee and Madison and other places have lots of activities also going on, you know, including Watertown in the city where I have a child and I would love to be able to get to those places. So that's a big issue for me is transportation. Public transportation? Yeah, and that's an issue that's come up in several sessions that I wasn't aware was a big problem. It's, in fact, I was just writing about that on my website today, just a brief thing about how it's a catch-22, if you're familiar with that phrase. It's difficult to get a car without a job, right. and yet it's difficult to get a job without a car yeah. in our society. You know, how do you get to work if you don't have a car? So, And also, just how do you get to the big cities where you might have a better chance of employment? So I think it's good for the economy. It's good for the environment because not so many people are driving. And it, it's uh, you know, just good for people's personal development. So thank you. Jordan, uh, is it Devine or Devine? Devin. Yeah. Devin. Um, I just have a quick question um, <coughs> about social issues, um, preferably about, I don't know, we'll just take a quick look, uh, Senate Bill 92, Senate Bill 306, Senate Bill 237, which are all... We're not so much focusing on questions as what you would like her to do. Oh, I just, just explain the issue. My, my issue is, um, with these pro-life legislation, what would, once you got into the Senate, what would be your stance on these issues, and how I would you um, go about that? I think that's a private decision that women should make with their families and okay. their doctor. Thanks. Okay. Mary Linton? Yeah. I'm a wetland biologist, and my question was, um, I this was we were supposed to hear about what she thought. Yeah, no, this is really, we're, we're trying to get input to her of, of really how, what you want her to know, or what positions you feel it's important for her to know, or, or what information you feel she should Okay, have. I feel in, uh, in this session, uh, there's been... Uh, an attack on wetlands, which provide incredible numbers of services for society, including flood protection, etc., groundwater uh, cleaning, etc., and uh, and also uh, the natural resources, similar natural resource questions in the watershed uh, in the north with the mining bill. Um, and I feel like uh, I would want a senator that was able to follow the science of those things and understand the processes. Yes, we make a note. I like to follow the science, yeah. Okay. You want to talk yeah, about? I mean, we can talk about that if you want. I um, used to work for the Department of Natural Resources and actually quit my job there partially because Kathy Stepp had been appointed and I just didn't feel like she was a very good advocate for natural resources. and. I, it just got to me working under someone like that who seemed to be advocating more for the building industry and, and the, well, now the mining industry rather than the resources that she was charged with protecting. So um, I feel very strongly about environmental protection. And I know we need to create jobs, but I think we can get a little more creative. And as far as the mining bill goes, um, we have a good mining bill on the books. I mean, people generally agree that it's worked well. So I feel like the mining company could have gone with the mining bill that we have on the books if they really wanted to mine there. But what seems to have happened is they looked at the mining bill and said, this is going to be really expensive to comply with all these regulations. How about we just write a new law and hope that we can ram it through and then we can do the mine any way we want. And the citizens have no recourse. So um, that's, that's where I come from. If you, if you want to have a mine in, in Wisconsin, we have laws. Comply with those laws and you can have your mine. Brief want to just share my thoughts on something. I mean, this this recall election and these elections are, are about one thing in my mind, and that's collective bargaining and rectifying that situation. Um, a number of of the like the governor candidates on, on the Democrat side have taken uh, Kathleen Falk, for instance, has taken a stance that she would veto the state budget um, if collective bargaining was not restored for public employees. And I kind of wanted to get your thoughts on on collective bargaining and and maybe if you would uh, consider taking the same stance. 
I'm really, I, I'm trying to push towards people saying what they would want her to do and what their viewpoint is on things. We're trying to get people's input to her. I mean, that's a stance we're trying to take at the various listening sessions. Fair, fair, fair enough. I guess that. I, I just like to. I, I'd like to be clear that I think that it's irresponsible uh, for somebody to veto the state budget um, or to not vote for the state budget because it wouldn't restore collective bargaining. Um, I think that's that's a large issue for me. Um, the state budget is crucial to, to the state um, and the, the workings of the state, and I, I think that's incredibly irresponsible. And I would hope that in your election um, and with all the work that you're about to do going forward, that you wouldn't make the mistake of making that same pledge. Okay. Well, I haven't been asked to make a pledge. Don't think I'll be asked to make a pledge. Wouldn't have veto power even if I were, you know, a senator. But, but yeah, I could. Would you vote. consider voting against the budget? If I, I would not sign a, any kind of pledge either way. I mean, there's just so many factors. It's it's crazy to say right now how I would vote on a budget in the future. I do think that it's really important for people to have the right to be able to come to the negotiating table and talk about their employment, safety rules especially. I'm hearing up in Dodge County, um, there are a lot of cor corrections officers up there. Mm -hmm. And so they have workplace safety rules that have evolved over years and years and years. You know, you have an incident with inmates and a, and a corrections officer and you say, how can we make sure this never happens again? And you implement these rules. And from what I'm hearing up there, all of those rules that took years and years and years of careful, thoughtful negotiation were thrown out the window in one fell swoop. And so what people are saying to me is, this isn't about money, you know, so much. We, they're saying, we made the concessions. We made the financial concessions that we had to make. We just want to seat at the negotiating table. And, and I'm even hearing from Republicans saying, you know, employees aren't as productive and as happy when they feel so downtrodden, you know, and they just feel so beaten down that like they have no say, especially when you consider how long workers uh, struggled to get these basic rights. So, um, so I think it's very, very important that people have that right to negotiate. Does that make sense to you? Okay, thanks. Kathleen Townsend. Okay, um, I'm referencing a bill, um, 510, uh, just uh, because this particular one just came across my uh, attention yesterday, that makes it illegal <coughs> to grow, share, trade, or sell homegrown food. So I'd like to express my opinion that in this district, we have CSAs, Community Supported Agriculture, that are really growing now. I'm a member of one, and I think that is so great. We have a farmer's market that's really growing. Um, I have my own seeds and plant a garden, which would be illegal. So I just want to express my feelings that this would be awful. I want to have control over what goes into my stomach, and I don't feel the government should be controlling that. Of course, it leads into the whole Monsanto and you know chemically engineered uh, seeds and all this kind of stuff, and I, I would like to see government taking their hands out of our food. Make it safe, and that's important, but not have a lot of control over that. So, I haven't heard about this. Okay, it's bill, um, Senate Bill 510, and I just heard it yesterday, that makes it illegal to grow, share, trade, or sell homegrown food. I saw, I saw it. I know. Um, yeah, I hadn't heard about that, but... I, I just keep, you know, they kept saying that there was going to be this laser focus on jobs, and I'm going, why are we talking about stuff like, you know, people can't sell extra <laughs> zucchini? <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. Okay, thanks for bringing that to me. special session this year, and I can't be quoted on it, but I think it's Act 7, okay, was that um, he appointed the power for himself to select all uh, agency department heads. And he also uh, built into that uh, more power for the governor uh, to be the final sayer, approval person, so to speak, for all policies coming out of those departments. Uh, it's my feeling that that is an overreach of power, that it changes the balance 
of power, and I don't care if it's a Republican governor or a Democratic governor. Um, I don't care for that uh, way of uh, proceeding with government. Um, it's my understanding that this takes some of those things out of the hands of the state legislature to dictate or point directions to what should be done by various departments. And so I guess, speaking for myself, I think that affects us in many, many ways that we don't even necessarily realize or will realize. And so I'd like to see that changed uh, kind of along the lines of your desire for good government where people have access to their legislators and that they can speak and debate these issues and have hearings and have a little bit more uh, participation in major changes that occur. So, say you oppose like, the governor, I just want to be sure that yeah, I'm getting it. Yeah, someone asked me the other day how I felt about the governor appointing the secretary of the DNR. And, you know, would it be better to go back to the old way of having the board appoint? And I said that I had heard pros and cons on each side, and I didn't really have an opinion, but this guy really cares about environmental issues, and he said that he felt like it was a bad thing to have the governor appoint. He said that the, the Natural Resources Board had a few members <coughs> appointed by governors, so you had this staggered effect. And so the, the board, they felt like, was usually pretty balanced, and that they generally tended to select more balanced uh, subjects for the DNA. Laws and some of the decisions being made, um, especially in the Democratic Party recently, have an effect on municipalities especially. Um, the recall elections are not just costing the state of Wisconsin a lot of money, but also um, municipalities that already paid to have a gubernatorial election and already paid to have a state senate election who are now going to have one in the middle of a term and then another, you know, it's an extraordinary <coughs> cost. And I guess, in my opinion, it's extraordinary, di extraordinarily difficult to justify the spending of those dollars uh, when recall was designed to remove people who have broken the law from office and not um, as an effort to change policy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand that concern. And, and I'm not crazy about the expense either. I'm a taxpayer too. Um, but I think we need to remember that Scott Fitzgerald did break the law. You know, a lot of people actually refused to sign Walker's petition, but did sign Scott Fitzgerald's. And they said it was because he broke the open meetings law while acting in his official capacity as Senate Majority Leader. And then the other day in, uh, it might have been in Lake Mills, I think, some, or no, maybe it was Columbus. They said, well, the Supreme Court found that he didn't, but if you actually read the Supreme Court decision, the Supreme Court said it's indisputable. But they said, the legislature can basically make up their own rules and follow their own rules, which kind of you know, begs the question, well, why have an open meetings law if the legislature doesn't have to follow? You know, we can agree to disagree, but I think that, 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 at least for me personally, that was the minute where I felt like Scott Fitzgerald had crossed the line. And I also, um, a lot of people have told me that they see this recall election as an investment. It's, it's going to be expensive, but it will save money in the long run. I mean, if you look at redistricting, say, um, redistricting usually is done by, on staff time. So the municipalities work together to establish the little lines of their municipalities, their wards, and then the legislators get together, usually, uh, I'm told, and kind of argue about then how this, those wards should be chunked together into districts. And I actually heard uh, <coughs> former Congressman Obi testify about that. He said, you know, we'd argue for a while, you know, it took a while, it took several days or weeks or whatever, but then we all went out and had a beer together and it was okay. And what has happened with the way the Fitzgeralds are running redistricting is instead of asking people to do their jobs that they're paid to do anyway, they've hired this expensive law firm in Madison and they've paid them at least $400,000 that we know of to do that. So that's $400,000 of taxpayer money to do a job that apparently would have been better done at the local level and with state legislators because now it's tied up in court and we just got word that they've been allowed another million dollars to defend that process. So, so we're paying these people, we're paying for the defense and then we're paying for the prosecution and 
it's this huge expensive process and that's just redistricting that's not voter ID which you know the clerks have already started to try to implement and now they've been told they don't have to and it's very very expensive to have people who are are so bent on doing things their way instead